Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! Welcome to another episode of my recap slash review of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. This is season three, episode seven. I don't know what this episode is called, but let's get into this. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm not in my normal space. I'm at my friend Chris's house. This has been a trying weekend for me, and this is where I'm at, so this is where I'm filming. Okay, so you're gonna be hearing traffic going because, I mean, she lives on a street, and there's cars driving by. Her neighbors might be going up and down the stairs. It's gonna be noise, so just prepare yourself. So let's start off with Jorge and Anfisa, because I completely forgot to talk about them last episode. So a little bit of what happened last episode, Anfisa goes to the therapist to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him about George and his lies. And she basically says that she's at the point now where she's ready to scrap the whole relationship because nothing's really changing. And I'm on her side about this whole thing. Side note, Anfisa has a YouTube channel and she's only had it since like the beginning of this year. And she already has over 100,000 subscribers, already got, her silver play button. And she only has like five things filmed and uploaded. You know, there are those of us who work really hard <laughs> to cultivate a YouTube channel. And there are those who don't have to work really hard to cultivate a YouTube channel. You know, she's definitely like an E-list, F-list celebrity. So moving on. Um, and I really feel for Anfisa. I feel like she has been tricked and duped into coming to this country. And she did act a whole fool when she first got here, was angry towards him and Jorge played the victim in this entire scenario. He definitely like made it seem like she was just beating him up and dragging him along. And he wasn't, he was trying his best, but nothing was ever good enough for her. And then it starts to unpack and you just realize especially with his revelation the other episode where he talks about how he didn't want her to meet his friends and he never thought of her as being somebody who would meet his friends. So he really planned on having Anfisa come here and just isolate the hell out of her. Once he realized that his family was probably gonna make some judgments or, or talk some shit about the fact that he went to Russia to find a 20 year old girl to marry, that he just decided that he was going to keep them separate. Re regardless of it, if it was a, a thought in the forefront of his mind, it was definitely something Something that was happening in the back of his mind to keep secret from his family and to keep Enfisa isolated as this thing is like plaything, I guess. This like trophy, I guess, you know? So Enfisa's kind of like frustrated because that's not really what she came here to do, especially like she wants to have fun and she didn't marry an old man, you know? She married somebody who was young and like he just wants to be on permanent vacation with her as we saw in this episode. He then, this episode, goes and speaks to the therapist on his own and it's just like a brick wall. The therapist is just throwing things at him like, well, maybe it's this, well, maybe it's that. You know, what do you think a marriage should be? And he's like, a marriage needs money. And he really feels like the reason why Anfisa is unhappy is because he doesn't have as much money as he used to have. And that if only he had more money to like take her around and distract her from what's really going on in his life, then she should have no problems. And I think that's all it is. He just wants to distract her from the fact that he's really not an interesting person, really doesn't have that much going on in his life besides trying to like entertain her. And she's, it's not enough for her. You know, she's, I feel like she thinks she could probably do it all on her own now that she's getting these 90 day fiance checks. She's like, what I need you for? when it comes to money. And I think she really wants something real with Jorge, but he just is not somebody who's in tune with his own feelings. And like I said, he is a liar. And he's one of those people who's probably lied since he was very little, like just to not get in trouble in the moment, unable to really think of the future or see long-term um, downfalls of making these lies. And so he just does it. And so that's a person you just gotta get out of. Like he really needs intensive therapy to understand that he's somebody who needs help and just can't make up lies in order to like make the person that he's lying to feel good for the moment. It's, it's all gonna catch up to him in the end, obviously he is very immature. It felt like the therapist was kind of just over talking to Jorge because he just knew Jorge wasn't getting it and he required a lot more help than what the therapist was paid to give by TLC. Jorge shook his hand and was like happy when the session was over and got up and left and uh, went back to Anfisa and told Anfisa that he thought that the reason why they needed what they needed was money and that the therapist isn't gonna help. So like from his standpoint, he's telling Anfisa that the therapist is not gonna help because like they don't need it. And Anfisa's like, yeah, I don't think the therapist is gonna help because you're dense, like a brick wall. He's not gonna get anything from it, so there's no reason for him to go. She's frustrated because on top of that, she has been receiving messages from a, apparently one of Jorge's ex-girlfriends who has told Anfisa that this child 
that she has this 10 year old child is George's and George's just has not paid for this child. So, I mean, obviously all they need to do is get a DNA test and it be done with it. But, um, Anfisa feels like if the child is his and Jorge knew about it, which he would lie to her and tell her he didn't know, that's what he would do. Um, he's already told her that it's not his kid. And Anfisa feels like if you're going to deny your own child, like, what does that make you? And if the child is 10 years old, he had this baby when he was like 17 or 18, right? Like, he's got a lot of problems. He's got a lot of problems. And poor Anfisa is just having to deal with all of it. And then in her confessionals, they ask her, like, about, you know, why she doesn't want to have kids with Jorge. And she's just like, look, if Jorge is going to deny this child, what if he denies my child? And I, and I get her, like, because he wants her as a trophy. I don't think he is somebody who could have a kid. Like he's not mature enough to have a child. And I think that he would just, when it's suited him, leave them and then claim to not have any money and then not take care of them. So it's best for Anfisa just to get out of it early so she can make her own life and her own living and not have to worry about George anymore. All right, so let's move on to our next couple. Um, we're gonna move on to Nicole and Azan. Nicole and Azan are in Morocco. I mean, Nicole is greeted with such kindness from Azan's family that I'm. I think that he has. I think that he's got his family fooled into believing that he loves Nicole as well. And they really are supportive of him. Like it, not even in the slightest bit are they like upset or angry about this. And if they are, they're not doing it in front of the cameras, which is like what a family should do, Chantel and Pedro. Yes, yeah, state your concerns, but you don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be like undercutting and nasty and like make good TV when you're all are together. So anyways, it's his sister and his mom. They're really welcoming. They hug May, they love May. They give Nicole her room and it looks like Azana's sleeping on the couch. Yeah, they're just hanging out in Morocco. Morocco looks so beautiful. That blue city looks so beautiful. I'm so jealous. May seems like she's having a great time. Azan seems really accommodating and loving towards May, which is sweet and endearing, but like that's kind of on vacation. You know, May's a wild child. So I'm happy that everything is going well so far. They're walking around. Nicole tries to hold Azan's hand. He refuses to, like he, she has the whole hold on to his like pocket because he doesn't want to hold her hands in public which he already stated that holding her hand in public was okay and he still isn't doing it so that leads us to believe that he doesn't like her and then Robbie comes to town and Azan is nervous Nicole tries to coach him before she gets there and it says to Azan you know you need to say more than just one word answers you gotta explain things if you don't my mother's gonna think that's suspicious so Robbie gets there and I expected her to be like kind of weird but she's not it seems like you know she was really excited to see May that she damn near forgot about Azan which I think I would be really excited if I hadn't seen my nephew in a long time and he was hugging and kissing on me because May did miss her grandmother she was was hugging her and it was so sweet and so finally um Robbie Lee comes up for air and says hi to Azan and they shake hands and you know they go to have lunch and Robbie Lee jumps right into it she's like look so what are the plans like what, what is this wedding like and Azan's mother and sister have started to plan the wedding and they really want Nicole to be involved and Nicole says it's a little overwhelming so I'm assuming she is involved but it's overwhelming for her and they're probably going to pull out all the stops because that's their only son and the only son is getting married and it's a big deal and so they're actually happy his family that the K-1 visa did get denied because now they get to have the wedding here and do everything here so all the family can come and so they're really really happy about that um, they thought they were going to lose him soon and now they get to have more time with him so I thought that was really sweet so Robbie Lee starts to ask the heavy hitting questions while they're at dinner or at lunch and Nicole doesn't want those questions to be asked she's just like look I'll take care of it like let's just go see the market let's go do all the fun stuff and then we'll ask the heavy questions later which really in Nicole's mind is never so we'll see and I wonder how much you know Robbie Lee's gonna have to spend on this wedding while she's there Nicole made it seem like Robbie Lee wasn't gonna have to spend anything and she already bought that dress so we shall see. All right, the next couple that we're gonna talk about today is De Molly and Luis. As we saw in last episode, Molly went on ahead and went to the divorce lawyer. Divorce lawyer told her to talk to immigration lawyer as well. Luis is gone. All right, so she calls her daughter 
and tells her daughter that Luis has gone. She asks Libby what she's doing. Libby says that she's driving and Molly's like, well, you know, guess what? Luis is not here anymore. You can come back anytime. And Libby's like, okay, where did he go? And Molly's just like, I don't know where he went. You know, he's just gone. He's not here anymore. He doesn't live here anymore. And I really feel bad and I'm sorry that I let Luis get in between us like that. And I know that it's my fault and I'm sorry. Libby's just like, okay. And Molly's like, okay, I love you. And Libby's like, okay, and hangs up. So either TLC edited it out to be shady or Olivia did not tell her mother she loved her. She's still really mad. I feel bad for Molly. So the next scene we have with Molly is her getting out of her beautiful car with some really cute boots on and walking up to the immigration office and speaking to the lawyer. And she speaks to the lawyer and the lawyer basically says, because everything is pending with Louise, there's really no set outcome of what can happen. That basically Molly signed an affidavit saying that she would be responsible for Louise for 10 years, that the government is gonna have no part in helping him do anything. So he can't get Medicaid, Medicare, none of that. So if he goes to the hospital, Molly's responsible. And just because they're getting a divorce isn't um, guaranteed that he then will not get his green card. Like the divorce has nothing to do with the green card. I mean, the faster she does it and it gets on record and by the time they get to his case, like maybe it'll make a difference depending on if Luis actually wants to stay in the US afterwards, which why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he want to get his green card? A lot of things are up in the air for Molly and Luis. And Molly says that she spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get him here and she doesn't want to have to pay anything more for him. But I think honestly, she is going to have to, especially if he doesn't have money. So it, it's making it seem like Molly is going to have to pay for everything for him. And that's not true. That's only if he can't pay for something. So the hope is, is that Luis doesn't completely just decide to not get a job and like make Molly pay for everything from afar, right? We would hope that wouldn't be the case. And I don't think it would be. I don't know though. I don't know him. So I really do hope the best for Molly. She's already living her own hell. Who am I to sit here and judge her? You know what I'm saying? Like she already knows where she went wrong. We already know where she went wrong. And like, what are you gonna do? And I hope that she can get out of this situation without having to pay any more of her own hard earned money. Like I just am like, this woman has built her life up. And I just hope that this mistake doesn't break that all down and she has to end up paying for him and doing things for him over the next 10 years because she has a kid on her payroll, you know? Okay, you guys, I 100% forgot to talk about Batman and Annie. Like, I didn't talk about David and Annie at all. And while I was editing, I was like, oh, dang. Okay, so real quick about David and Annie. In this episode with David and Annie, David's sister comes into town. So the first thing we see with David and Annie is they are at the grocery store shopping for some food items for Annie to make dinner for David's sister, who he hasn't seen in 10 years, who lives in Pittsburgh, who's coming into town. Um, they get the food from the market and they go over to the sister's Airbnb because the sister had to stay somewhere. You know, she couldn't stay with them at the firehouse. So they get to her house, Annie cooks a meal, and sister's really grateful and gracious to Annie and it's really a really nice situation. David's sister looks exactly like they I mean they look exactly alike. It's just David with a wig on, honestly. And so they sit down to eat their meal and while they're eating, David brings up the fact that he's really glad to see his sister. He's happy to see her after 10 years, um, but he wants to borrow some money. And the sister is shocked because she's just like, um, I thought you were doing better. I thought you were changing your ways. I thought, you know, you were on the up and up. Every time I've spoken to you, it seems like everything's okay. And he's like, well, no, actually, you know, it, I've been here for six months and still haven't been able to find a job. And she's like, why not? And he's like, well, the climate that we're in. And the sister's like, absolutely not, David. You could find a job doing something. You could find a job doing something until you can find the job that you want, but you could be working. You're choosing not to. And Annie 100% agrees. So Annie and the sister seem pretty aligned with the way they feel like David is handling the situation. And the sister ends up just saying, look, David, if I gave you money, then I would be enabling you. That would be one more month that you're not gonna do what you need to do. So I'm not gonna give you the money because you need to figure it out on your own. I love you to death, but I'm not gonna give you that money. And David is crushed because he honestly thought his sister was gonna give it to him. And Annie is like having to sit through this and I know it's embarrassing and she's upset because she's like, why do you keep asking people to borrow money and you keep asking to borrow, just go get a job. And he's just like, well, it's not that easy, honey. You know, he's just throwing her the same lines he always says to placate her. And Annie's just at this point too smart to believe it. I think she was too smart to believe it in the beginning, but she just really wanted to believe that he was going to do this thing for her. She really wanted to believe that she'd gotten the fairy tale of this uh, rich American or this wealthy foreigner. And it didn't, it just didn't happen for her. So cut to the next scene. 
with Annie and David. They're gonna have dinner with the aunt Ashley and Annie and David and Annie doesn't know what to expect She's a little worried because she doesn't get along with Ashley, but she's hoping that everybody will be on their best behavior The aunt is talking about how she would come down to Louisville all the time to hang out with the kids Like she would come down all the time to hang out with David's kids But she just hasn't been able to do it for the last couple of years Especially because all the kids are grown up and so Annie jumps in and is like well Would you come down and help me with our kids? And this shocks the hell out of the sister. The sister is just like, you guys are planning on having kids? Like, she thinks that's wholly irresponsible. She's like, the other day you just finished asking me for money, yet you guys are planning to have kids. And you know that David can't have kids, right? You know he had a vasectomy. And Annie then, Annie just said the wrong thing. She's ex Annie is expecting that family to have a certain amount of decorum and poise when they are dealing with her. And she does not understand what the wrecking ball of a mess that David has left behind. His family is not afraid to tell him that he's wrong or that what he's doing is stupid. And they will tell him and her that. And Annie is having a hard time with that. But honestly, she married somebody who like had all these issues. And this is what she's gonna always have to deal with. And she feels like they're attacking her. But the truth is they're not attacking her, they're attacking him. And they're also letting her know that he's got a lot of ish going on and that he can't be talking to her about having kids. So anyways, Annie gets very upset and she's like, I don't feel like I have to explain myself to you guys. You guys always want me to answer all these questions. And all I want to do is just like come and meet you guys and have a nice dinner. And they're and they're just looking at her like, uh oh, you know, especially the sister. She didn't mean to do it. I think Annie just needs a little bit of respite. She lives every single day looking at David and not do shit. And so she just wants to have a nice dinner and not talk about all the bad. And they all they do is keep bringing up the bad, which I think they should, because David needs to have that conversation. He's clearly somebody who runs away, and his sister said so. He's She's just like, you know, you can't run away from this. You gotta stay here and figure this out. So anyways, he lets Annie get up. Annie gets up from the dinner table and she walks outside because she's very upset and David doesn't go after her. Ashley does. So Ashley gets up and goes after her and like says, hey, what's up? You know, I'm sorry that that happened. But, you know, just so you know, like this is going to this is what it is right now. Dad left a mess behind and like people have questions and you're unfortunately going to be there when they ask those questions. And David is dumb because he leans on Annie for the answers. Like that's so dumb. Annie's the only person who has faith in David, kind of, because she he hasn't done anything wrong to her, kind of, yet. To me, Ashley is really stepping out and doing something nice because honestly, David should be out there. And Annie is grateful that Ashley did come out, but she says she still doesn't trust her. So anyways, they get back into the um, restaurant. Um, the sister apologizes and says that she's sorry, but you know, these are important things they need to have a conversation about. And him thinking about starting all over again, having kids when he shouldn't. Like the thing is though, like the his track record proves that he shouldn't have kids. He upped and left the kids that he had. He doesn't, he's very selfish. He's very selfish. He's like Jorge. I mean, George and David or Jorge and David are the exact same person 20 years apart. That's why Amphisa needs to run. If she wants to know what her future is like, she needs to look at David. Just a really immature, selfish man who shouldn't have kids, but doesn't know that they shouldn't have kids. <sighs> it's just so taxing. I feel so bad for Annie. So then they have that meal and that's done. The next meal that happens, it seems like they always are out having meals, which is great, TLC is paying for it. So Ashley and Annie, they get together to hash it out. Ashley comes out with the big question, like, look, I heard that dad met you in an escort bar. And Annie's like, escort bar? What are you talking about? Everyone keeps on talking to me about escort bars. Like, he didn't meet me in an escort bar. Like, we've gone to bars together. We've gone to like vagina bars or like sex bars or whatever, women are like, popping things out of their vaginas or whatever and they've gone together and they've had a great time but like he didn't meet her at that kind of establishment and Annie doesn't know why everyone keeps on saying that they did personally I don't believe that but that's just me that's just me I heard they met at a karaoke bar which I could believe that but I also like want to know what Annie did you know like it's none of my business but I do want to know Anyway, so, and I was actually okay with her being a sex worker. So like, that's why I'm just like, well then what'd you do then? 
Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's none of my business. That's how they met is how they met and like whatever. Ashley, I mean, Annie is just like kind of laughing about it and Ashley's a little bit like, ew, like don't tell me that you and my dad went to this thing. Like that's gross. I don't want to know all that. TMI, TMI. I'm like, but you asked girl, you asked, you got the answer. Um, so anyway, so that's where they leave it off. We leave off with them having like that conversation and Annie saying she still doesn't trust Ashley, but they're on the way of getting better. And that only makes sense, you know? Okay, so that's it. Sorry guys, next time I will take notes so I will not have these issues. Talk about, okay, so our final couple that we're gonna talk about is Pedro and Chantel. So much is going on. Pedro and his sister Nicole having lunch or dinner or something and Pedro saying that Chantel was out of line. He's really sorry for her behavior. He doesn't know what's up with her. And then Nicole saying that she doesn't have a problem with Chantel and that Chantel just got hysterical. And the truth is, is that Chantel did just get hysterical, you guys. I mean, stop, stop, drop and roll. Stop, drop and think. Think about this. These are your in-laws. Your in-laws come to visit. You already are on shaky ground with them. They come to visit. The sister-in-law antagonizes you by saying she doesn't want to sleep on the couch. And so you immediately pop up and get upset because yes, your husband did make a mistake by trying to low key blame it on you saying like, oh see, I told you to get the other couch. Like that was wrong of Pedro, but it was also wrong of Chantel to come at Nicole the way she did. Like regardless of what Nicole said, here's what it is. The situation is, is that my father is close with his siblings, right? And I can think of a situation in which my mother tried to get into an argument with one of his sisters. And my dad is not gonna side with my mother on, against his sister. He's not. He didn't get involved in it, but he's also not going to take sides. That's his sister. I cannot even imagine a scenario where me and my soon to be sister-in-law get into an argument and I then expect my brother to not take my side. That is my brother. I have known him since he was born, okay? He is my first friend. Like, I get it that he's marrying this person and I would absolutely do my best to not be like Nicole and be rude to her. I'm nothing, I, I love my sister-in-law, right? There is no reason for me, even if she does something that upsets me later on, there would be no way that I would put him in that situation. So that's why I think Nicole is wrong for putting Pedro in that situation. Obviously it doesn't respect the relationship between Pedro and Chantel. That is the truth. But also Chantel's family does not respect the relationship between Pedro and Chantel. So it's happening on both ends and Chantel is sensitive. She did get upset when she shouldn't have. She should have just let the sister siblings duke it out. As soon as she said that Nicole said that she didn't want to sleep on that couch, Chantel should just been like, okay, I'm gonna go to school. Bye. And let Pedro do what he needed to do for his sister and then yell at him afterwards. Right? But there's no reason to have the issue with the sister. The issue is with your husband not doing the things that you think that he should do and not blaming his family for it. It's him. Right? I don't know, that's just the way I think of it. And it's because I come from a big family where like there's no reason to have squabbles like that. I'm not gonna fight with my sister-in-law. I'd hope my sister-in-law wouldn't fight with me over my brother because that's my brother. Like I just, I would hope that wouldn't happen and it would be so dumb. Like obviously I'm a force to be reckoned with too and like my sister-in-law's not gonna fight with me because like I'm right. But like, that's just me. But Chantel's also like whimpering and like, I feel like Nicole is a mean girl. I feel like in life she's a mean girl. She sees Chantel like whimpering behind Pedro. And so obviously she's gonna assert her authority. She then runs back and tells her parents everything and then wonders why they are in her business trying to investigate him. Oh my God. So then there's this stupid set up scene where Chantel's at her parents' house looking great. Actually, her face is beat. I don't know where they are. In someone's house, someone's apartment. And everyone has their coats on like they're about to leave, but they're having a like casual conversation. And she's telling him all the stuff about Nicole and the night and the sofa and all this stuff and how, you know, he's like, I'm just gonna stay with my sister in a hotel. And then all of a sudden like Winter and Tomas and like all these people decide that like they're sleeping together, which is disgusting. And Chantel is like, look, I know that's his sister. I'm like, you don't know that. That's gross that he's sleeping in the same, like what? I could get a hotel room with my brother right now. Two queen beds in a room, it's not a thing. I can't stay in the same room as my brother that I've known my entire life. Like what? 
that's stupid to in, to like assume incest. And then it's just so much dumbness. And then, dumbness, did I make that word up? I did, just like stupider. If Karen can make up words, so can Wa. Then they all go, are going in on Pedro and I guess Chantel is feeling really good about herself that she, you know someone's on her side. And then Karen starts to take off her rings like she's gonna go over there and fight somebody. This woman is not near near in her late 40s, early 50s and she's gonna get up somewhere and go fight with some 20 year olds, taking off her jewelry, rolling my eyes. TLC, that was bad. That was a dumb choice. And then there's also this, this part where like, I feel like she's reading a cue card, but like Karen speaks really slow. And I think it's cause she's like thinking of the right words in her brain in order to, before she says them. And it, they're still not right. I can't do any reenactments today, guys. Let me look, let me look it up. How can we expect that he is going to take care of Chantel when he is clearly lining up and siding against her with his sister. What is happening? Is she on mood stabilizers too? I don't know. What's going on? All right, you guys, so that is the end of this episode and that is the end of my recap on this episode. What did you guys think of this episode? I'm pretty sure there's things I missed because I didn't take any notes because I was just like chilling with the homies, watching it, not due diligently, not doing my due diligence in my room, writing my notes like I normally do. But girl, next episode is finna be lit. This is when the fight with Pedro and River happens. River don't look like he can fight his way out of paper bag, but it looks like Pedro's from the school of hard knocks and he knows what is up. They have been disrespectful and rude to Pedro for the longest time and I'm not here for it. And I know some people don't think think of it like that but honestly that's the way it is <laughs> in my opinion I am a okay um so that is the end thank you guys so much please leave a comment down below let's have this conversation uh follow me on Instagram also link below is my Facebook where I do keep up well I really try to keep up on my Facebook page and like let you guys know what's going on maybe I should go live more often I don't know girl we're trying to do our very very best um but that is it thank you so much all right you guys have a fantastic day bye all right, you guys have a fantastic day. All right, you guys have a fantastic day. Bye. How do we like this ring light? Should I get me a ring light? I had to take off my glasses because you could definitely see the ring light in my glasses. Okay, that's it. I think I'm good, right? I'm good. I feel good. You feel good? I feel good.